Hey guys, it's Will here, back with another video. Um, I know it's been a little while since I've uh, posted much on YouTube. I've been, uh, I was away for a week in Morocco, and then when I got back had some, some stuff to deal with. Uh, nothing, nothing to worry about, just stuff. Um, just meant I couldn't get anything done for a couple of weeks, but uh, yeah, we're all sorted now, and I'm uh, back making videos. So uh, I've got plenty of content sort of planned. I've got bat reps already filmed, just need editing. I've got... Um, some painting tutorials in process um, but today what I wanted to do was have a go at making like a top five top ten type video there's quite a lot of these sort of things on YouTube but uh, not seeing many relating to Warhammer 40k particularly the more um, like the game side of it rather than the fluff side of it um, so I thought I'd, uh, I'd have a go at doing some and see how, uh, how they turned out and uh, how people liked them so today starting off with the top five tanks in Warhammer 40k now um, for tanks um, obviously that's quite a broad category there's a lot of things in Warhammer 40k that have the tank special rule but some of them don't necessarily fulfill the role of a tank so when I was compiling this list I kind of stuck to things that did what you know sort of the traditional main battle tank roles so they're armoured they have a little bit of mobility but they're not necessarily super fast they, they move around, they fire, they shoot stuff. I've kind of left out things that primarily aren't tanks, even if they have the tank special rule, like um, this uh, this here Razorback. It's a tank, but it you can't really compare it to something like a Lehman Russ, because this is a, a cheap, lightly armoured transport with a sort of a stuck-on heavy weapon. It's not, not really uh, what you'd think of as a tank, whereas something like the um, Necron Doomsday Arc, uh, or Doomsday Barge, that, that big one with the massive cannon, that does do the, the job of a tank, even if it doesn't strictly have the tank special rules. So uh, that's kind of the criteria I've um, included in this. But anyway, without further ado, let's get on and look at our first tank. So starting us off at number five, we have the Space Marine Predator. Now this is kind of the, uh, your classic tank. It has good frontal armour, a little bit of mobility, um, and a, a good range of guns to choose from with uh, long range and high power. Um, so you've either got the auto cannon or the twin las cannon on the turret, and uh, then you've got your sponson and weapons, or either las cannons or heavy bolters. You can stick other weapons on there, like a hunter killer missile or a uh, or a storm bolter, to basically allow this tank to deal with the type of threats you want it to deal with. Um, it can uh, potentially, if it stays still, fire four or even five weapons a turn, depending on the loadout. And uh, yeah, like I said, it has a nice amount of damage and a good range. However, it's got a couple of key weaknesses that stop it from getting any higher on this list. Firstly, is manoeuvrability. Now, it can move six or twelve inches, but the moment it moves even an inch, even half an inch, it loses the ability to fire the majority of its weapons at full ballistic skill. Um, so you go from being able to fire the Sponson, the Pintle um, and the turret weapon to down to just choosing from one, which really nerfs its mobility. Um, so, uh, you know, across a straight field um, with the target open to it where it doesn't have to move, that's fine. But if you're having to move to get to your targets, it's uh, a little bit of an inconvenience because um, you're just not doing as much damage. Secondly, it's um, although its front arm is very good, it's very flimsy on the sides. You've only got armor 11 there, um, which means, again, if, you know, terrain's tight, someone can get in a side shot on you, then, uh, you know, you are in a, in a bit of a pickle. So, uh, yeah, not a bad tank and uh, certainly a staple of um, the Adaptus Astartes over the years um, and the Traitor Legions as well, um, uh, but not, uh, not as good as some of the others on this list. Now, there are some better Forge World versions and in Horus Heresy you can give it Machine Spirit, which gives it a little bit more uh, manoeuvrability, but not really covering those here. Um, so Predator is uh, going to be at number five. And at number four, we have the Falcon Grav Tank. Now, this is one of the most versatile tanks in the 41st millennium. 
it's uh, by far and away the fastest tank on this list, thanks to uh, being a fast skimmer, uh, which is quite frankly what you'd expect from the Eldar entry to this list. Um, it has a good choice of weapons, you've got that pulse laser, um, and then you can couple that with a shuriken cannon, scatter laser, bright lance, EML, um, and then the potential for an underslung shuriken cannon as well. Um, and the fact that it's a fast vehicle means that it can move 12 inches and still fire two main guns at full ballistic skills. So, uh, yeah, a bit more uh, manoeuvrability and damage output than the Predator, that's for sure. Uh, coupled with that, it does have a limited transport capability. Now, I considered leaving this, leaving it off the list because it's a transport, um, but it's primarily a tank. You know, you take it as a heavy support choice. It's there to do damage. The Eldar's transport vehicle is the Wave Serpent, um, which is an amazing transport. Um, the Falcon, you, you don't take it for its transport. It's just like a an extra thing that it can do. Um, now, the problem with the Falcon, though, is uh, it is one of the lightest armoured vehicles on this list. It's 12-12-10, which means from the front or the side, it's potentially vulnerable to assault cannons, scatter laser, um, sort of fire, and uh, yeah, um, doesn't uh, have that sort of solid 13 front armour that most tanks have. Uh, what it does have, though, is that incredible manoeuvrability, the option to jink, the option to take holo fields. So uh, certainly not a bad tank by any means. But uh, yeah, the other problem is it doesn't have an ac access to a weapon above strength eight, which does limit it. It uh, does limit it as a true tank hunting tank. Strength eight will pop light transports, and in theory can scratch tanks. But to be honest, you want higher strength to uh, to really deal with them. Um, deal with the majority of enemy tanks so uh, yeah a great choice uh, but uh, sort of pinned back a little bit by its lack of armour and high strength weaponry. Now number three on the list is a tank that's certainly not wanting for front armour or for high strength weaponry, the Space Marine Vindicator. This tank has 13 armour to the front, which means it's uh, very resilient to frontal attacks, um, and it has that massive strength 10 AP2 Ordnance Large Blast on the main gun. So this thing is going to put a real hole in whatever it hits. Um, I mean, that sort of... The Strength 10 AP2 Large Blast means it can take on virtually any sort of infantry and put a hole in even the, the hardest hit uh, the hardest armoured units. And the 2D6 armour penetration for being Ordnance allows it to go tank hunting against even the hardest tanks out there. So uh, certainly a very good tank. Got a slight buff in this edition with the ability to be taken in squadrons. Although the, the squadron bonus of firing that, uh, that Apocalypse Blast template isn't as good as you first think because you need all three tanks to be up and people are going to target this. And also it you lose out two shots so you only get, get the one shot. Um, but you know it certainly can do some damage in the right situation. Now this tank does suffer with a couple of drawbacks. Um, it firstly is lacking in side armour, much like the Predator, it only has armour 11 to the side, so it is vulnerable to scatter laser fire, assault cannons, even potentially heavy bolters can put a scratch on this on the side. Um, and you will get side shots on this because with only a 24 inch range, it has to keep moving forward to keep that gun in range. So uh, certainly a tank that can do a lot of damage, but one that can be taken out of the equation, especially since a, a single weapon destroyed result does leave this thing a little bit of a, a dead fish floating in the water. Um, but anyway, one thing that's certainly not a dead fish floating in the water is the tank at number two. And that tank at number two is the Tau Hammerhead. Now, like the Vindicator, this thing is packing at strength 10 on its main gun, which is great for tank hunting purposes. Um, but unlike the Vindicator, it has a 72 inch range. So this thing can really stay back, out of trouble, maybe in some cover and just draw a line of sight with its rail gun and start blowing tanks up. This is a, a really good weapon. It's also got the AP1 on there, so plus two to the damage table. Now, it does lack the option of a strength 10 large blast, but it does have the submunition, so it can still take on infantry, maybe not quite as well as the Predator, but then it has the additional guns, um, either burst cannons 
or uh, missile pods, smart missile systems, I think they are, um, to uh, to do the extra damage to infantry there. So potentially um, a bit more flexible, and that long range really helps to keep it safe. That and having actually better armour than the Vindicator or the Predator, with 13 to the front and 12 on the side, keeps it a little bit safer. And being a skimmer, it can, if it needs to, jink, although you wouldn't normally want to do this, because you lose the ability to fire that devastating main gun at full ballistic skill. Now this is a tank we don't see much of and I think that's in part because uh, the rest of the Tau Codex is so good that you know you take this or you take a Riptide they do a similar job in a different way and the Riptide is just so good right now that people don't tend to put the hammerhead out there but uh, in any other codex it would um, certainly uh, certainly make it in there. Um, other weakness perhaps is that much like the Vindicator it suffers from having just one really good gun and if it loses that it's really not very uh, very effective but you know it's not quite as bad as the Vindicator because it is that little bit more survivable and it has slightly better secondary weapons. Uh, but anyway before we uh, look at the tank at number one just want to give us a few honourable mentions. The first of these is the Eldar Fire Prison Grav Tank. Now, like the Falcon, this is highly manoeuvrable and has the option to jink, but much like the Hammerhead and the Vindicator suffers from only having that one main weapon, um, however, this main weapon isn't quite as good as the Demolisher Cannon or the Heavy Rail Cannon, so uh, it, um, it just doesn't quite have the same damage output. It's a, a nice flexible gun, but uh, just not as deadly as some of the other vehicles on this list. Then we have the Dark Eldar Ravager. Now this thing isn't truly a tank, but it does the same job as a tank. It moves around, shoots stuff at long range, and is better armoured than the other stuff in the Codex, although you'd hardly call AV-11 good armour, which is why this thing falls off the list. It's uh, just too easy to take down, even with Jink and um, some shields. This thing just, uh, just falls apart like a wet paper bag, unfortunately. It does have the three bright lances, or sorry, dark lances, because it's Dark Eldar, um, and it can move around, uh, move six inches and still fire all three of them, or move 12 and fire two of them at full ballistic skill. So uh, certainly not a bad armament, but uh, not quite enough to counteract that, uh, that terrible armour. And the last of our honourable mentions is the Necron Doomsday Arc. Now this thing, much like the, um, the Vindicator, is packing a really powerful large blast main gun um, with strength 10 and a good armour penetration. Um, it does have really good range on this as well, like the, uh, the Tau Hammerhead, and armour 13 to the front and the side. So why isn't this thing on the list? Well, the moment it moves any distance at all, it loses a lot of that strength from the main gun um, because it has to divert power to its engines. You'd think the Necrons have been around for 60 million years and they've not found a way to make a tank that can move even an inch and fire at full, um, at full effectiveness. So that makes it uh, just very easy to avoid, cut down line of sight to. And uh, as soon as it takes a penetrating hit, that AV-13 becomes AV-11, thanks to quantum shielding. Uh, certainly a tank that can do some damage, but one that can be worked around, um, meaning it didn't quite make the top five. But here we are, on to our final and top tank. And top spot on this list absolutely has to go to the Lehman Russ. Now this really is the, the essence of what it means to be a main battle tank. You've got armour 14 to the front without compromising on the sponson, on the side armour. You've got a huge selection of guns from battle cannons, vanquisher cannons, demolisher cannons, punisher cannons, uh, plasma cannon type weapons on the turret, and sponson options varying from heavy bolter to las cannon to plasma cannon to even multi melter. This thing can be absolutely bristling with guns, um, and guns that can take on a variety of roles. Also, unlike the Predator, this thing can move six inches and still fire all of its weapons at full BS if you didn't take an ordnance weapon on the turret because of the heavy vehicle rule. So this uh, becomes just a great way of lugging around loads of heavy weapons that can move and fire, and all in a package that just won't fall apart. 
it's just such a solid vehicle. Now, there are certainly ways to take it down, get into combat with dedicated combat troops, and you'll uh, be able to hit the rear armour, but uh, you're going to have to get there first. This thing's got good range on the majority of its weapons, so uh, you're going to have to cross the battlefield facing the fire of not one, but probably three of these or more, because you can take them in squadrons. So you can have nine in a force organisation chart, even without taking the tank commander. So uh, there we have it. That's uh, that's the top ten. Oh, sorry, the top five tanks in Warhammer Forty Thousand. Uh, tell me what you thought of this list. Did I get it wrong? Is there something out there better than the Russ? Is there something I missed off this list? Um, you know, tell me what you think. And also let me know if you like this style of video. Um, I'm hoping to make more of these if they go down well, so uh, let me know what you think. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!